How do you prepare for a production day when you're wearing so many hats? You're the producer, director, lead actor, and cinematographer. The only thing I prepare is getting everybody there, right? There's no shot list. There's nothing. I own all the equipment. I own all the gear. I know how to work it. I know how to operate it. I know what I'm trying to capture in the lens because the only thing I'm concerned about is what's seen within that frame. So if I can get everyone there, I can move mountains. So the way I break it down is it's three stages when you think about filming and then final product. Pre-production, creating it, words, lining everything up, getting everyone ready. Production, the fun part, everyone gets to create, have a good time, you get to shoot, all that stuff. Post-production, you do all the, the, the color grading, editing, ADR, sound design, music score, everything. And then you have the fourth phase, which is selling, distribution, all of that stuff and getting it out to the world, marketing. So when it comes to shooting on set, I break things down in a very easy, strategic way that's not only efficient, but it takes the pressure off of the actors and actresses it allows for the freedom of creativity and it's easier on myself and my brother. So when I'm in front of the camera, I'll set up the shot, set up the light, put it at the focal length that I want, and then I'll hand it off to my brother and my brother will go and I'll be like, okay, here, move the camera here, do this. And then he'll go and, and do that stuff. So he's been a tremendous help in allowing me to be in front of the camera and still capture what I need to capture. By breaking it down into segments, and instead of taking this whole page as this one scene, you take a whole page and break it down into four segments, right? Now it's like, hey, as an actor, you only have to worry about these three lines right now. This is what we're gonna shoot. And instead of them having to do nine lines, they did three lines. Okay, now we're gonna cut to this because I shoot as an editor. That saves me so much time and space because I don't get anything that I don't need. The moment we get the take, I know that's the take I'm going to use to edit, I move on. I adjust the lights where I need it to be, and then we shoot in sequence. So even when I edit, I know that the sequence is going in line with the scene. So if I'm shooting line 27, we start at the beginning of 27, and we shoot that in sequence. Then as we shoot that and we get you know, closer to me being on camera because I tend to shoot everyone else first. I get all their shots first and then I shoot my sequence. My sequences are a lot quicker because I already kind of know what I want to do with the character. And I, it, it, my shots are less magical because they're a lot more mechanical. Here's the thing. I'm not the best actor. Right? I would say I'm probably like an average actor. If across the board, I'm just average. I can do everything except cry on cue. Like I've tried cutting onions. I've tried sticks. I just can't cry. I don't know what it is. I just can't cry. But I can do everything else. So when it comes to me being on camera, I know what looks good. I know what sounds good. I know that if we're shooting close up, don't move your head too much. You know, if you're going to do action shots, we're going to go a little wider. I get that. So once I shoot everybody else first and we've captured all of their shots because I'm so... Um, aware of their time that when it comes to me I do my takes in about one or two takes and then we move on and I know that now that I've said this on camera you might be able to tell that oh, okay he did that like in one or two takes because we have to keep moving we have to keep going and when you wear so many hats you have to get out of your head that this is stressful it's not like you're making a movie. You're setting people up, you're setting the lighting and you're pushing record. If this is what you want to do with your life, then it's fun time. So take away the stress because you are what you think. So if you think making a movie is going to be hard, it's going to be hard. But I can tell you it's not hard. It's time consuming. Anything in life, it's not hard. You're not out there drilling oil in the middle of the ocean. You're making a movie. So if you can break it down into steps and just be consistent, filmmaking will be a lot easier than you think it is. Hollywood likes to, to give you the magic and show you there's 100 people on set and that it's super difficult. Like, yeah, to make 
Hollywood's budget films, Hollywood level films, you have masters at each section, masters at lighting, masters at cinematography, focus pulling, directors, you have these masters. So they're coming out with the master product. You as an indie filmmaker, you don't have those masters on your team a lot of the times. So you have to wear a lot of hats. You have to become the master. What that does is you trim the fat, you know how to streamline your movement and you learn how to get things done. But if you learn how to direct and edit at the same time, your editing becomes so much easier and it becomes a lot more feasible and consumable to digest the entirety of a film. You edit your films as well? Correct? Yes. Okay. So I edit my films uh, a lot of times as I'm shooting. Um, with Pizza Boy Rick, I wanted to do it a little different. So I'm shooting first and then I, I'm starting the editing process. I like to try different things to kind of see what works for me. But when it comes to editing, there's two things that I really, that I focus on. As I'm editing, uh, you're scrubbing through the footage, you're seeing what you want, you're kind of going for a particular look, so that's your color grade from scratch. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. You don't need 10 layers. You, you can color it to get it to look good and then decide if you want to go a little warm, a little cool, you want to just keep it neutral. Different scenes can kind of look differently depending on where you're at. The biggest thing about post-production and editing is sound design. Like, I can't stress enough how important sound is because when I say you feel sound, it's so true. When I say, okay, look, we're gonna edit. I'm gonna take these 10 takes and I'm gonna edit it into the most dynamic scene that I possibly can edit. And there's a lot of times where I see a scene and I'm like, man, I wish I would have did that differently. Um, because I only give myself so many takes. And because you wear so many hats, you don't have the luxury of really thinking, oh, I'm gonna do this with this character. No, because it's like, all right, I'm directing. Okay, get in this, get in this. Okay, my turn, action. Then you go. So when I am editing, there's a lot of times where as an actor, right, taking off the other hats, as an actor, I would have performed it maybe a little different. I would have let myself get into that zone just a little bit more. But as a filmmaker, I'm like, it's fine, let's move on. So because I'm able to see that take and I'm able to see it in the final timeline on how I'm gonna edit it, what the color grade's gonna look like, how is it gonna turn out, what is it gonna sound like, the editing process becomes the most enjoyable part about the film because that's where it really comes to life, uh, comes alive. If you think about any film that you love, that's just in incredible to you, there's probably one or two things, I'm gonna say two things, that I can guarantee exists with any film that anyone loves. Sound design, music. And the reason why that's so important is because they give you a feeling to a specific time and place. Like I love 80s, 90s music scores. That's what I love because that's what I grew up with. And for me, those are kind of timeless scores, right? When you're talking music. If you're someone newer, you might like the early 2000s scores because those were a part of you at a certain time in life, right? So if you think about, like I don't listen to music that much anymore as I've gotten older. All of the music that I listened to almost stopped when I was like 20, 19, but that's because in those times, a lot of the music is associated with things that I've experienced for the first time. So then as you get older and you don't experience things for the first time anymore, it doesn't have that same memory impact. So as a filmmaker, when you're in post-production or you're thinking about how you want a shot to be completed, think of your sound, think of how you're going to do your sound design. So in my films, a lot of times, there's not empty spaces where there's just dialogue. And the reason for that is because I enjoy sound so much. I want it to be almost like its own experience throughout the story. 
that if you could turn off the dialogue and just hear the sonic waves going without them talking, you could still get a sense of what's happening in the film. So that's why sound design is so important when you're in post-production. Um, and shooting and editing at the same time is extremely important as a filmmaker, especially if you're in front of the camera. Um, because it allows you to know exactly what you're trying to capture and you don't have to guess. And then you don't have to go through terabytes of footage to try and just get that perfect shot. Do you ever wish though, like when you get it in the editing bay, or excuse me, on the timeline, like I wish I had had one more take of this? All the time. Oh, okay. All the time, especially like when you have dynamic shots, um, car shots, me in front of the camera, I always know, especially in hindsight, Right, because when you're editing, it's almost hindsight. Like you've already shot it, so now you're editing. I always, as a creator, know that I can do it better. The moment it's done, I know I can do it better. The moment where I'm like, all right, it's a wrap. I know I can make that movie better because I just gained all of that experience points. I just leveled up. I just became better because I just did another project. Um, so there's certain things that you see when you're editing that you don't necessarily see on set because you're thinking of five steps ahead. Or even when you look at the shot, you're like, yeah, that looks great. And then when you look at it on a big screen, you're like, oh, that could have been focused a little better. Or this person, I didn't see that soda can back there, right? You miss those things sometimes. Um, but it's just, it's, it's all part of the, the evolution of you as an artist. It's all part of what you do when you make films, you're always going to look at something and say, I could have done that better.